I'm here to share with you one of my favorite objects from the Becoming Los Angeles exhibit. Now this might look like an old, ordinary sewing machine, but industrial machines like this one were meant for heavy workloads. They required full focus and extreme caution. Now if you've ever used a sewing machine, maybe recently, to sew a face mask, imagine yourself working behind that machine for long hours in a day, only to earn less than minimum wage. How might you feel? As a symbol for garment workers in the 1930s, the sewing machine highlights how marginalized communities in Los Angeles have led radical movements to fight for social and economic justice. The Alberta Hollywood sewing machine was used to manufacture ladies' coats between the 1920s through the 1940s. At this time, Los Angeles was known as an open shop town, which meant that companies could not discriminate against their workers as long as they did not join the union. As a result, companies usually hired women of immigrant backgrounds, and the majority here in LA were undocumented Latinas. Garment workers managed through harsh working conditions like cramped workspaces and health and safety code violations in the buildings. They were paid based on the number of garments completed per day, which was well below the federal minimum wage. This grew exhausting for the workers, and by the 1930s, workers organized together to challenge the garment industry at the height of the Great Depression. Marginalized communities such as people of color and immigrants were largely blamed for the effects of the Great Depression. For example, mass deportations known as Mexican repatriation occurred in which thousands of Latinos were forced to leave the country. About 60% of them were U.S. born citizens. Latino garment workers took high risks to organize with the help of the International League of Garment Workers Union, the ILGWU. Together, they distributed bilingual pamphlets and communicated through Spanish radio. As an association of workers forming a legal unit, a union helps workers bargain for and secure improvement in pay, benefits, and working conditions. So, in the fall of 1933, LA garment workers proposed their demands, which included union recognition, 35-hour work week, and minimum wage. When employers refused to meet those demands, garment workers went on strike on October 12th. Nearly 3,000 women walked the picket lines, about three quarters of which were Latinas, affecting 80 manufacturers. This lasted for three weeks until federal mediators stepped in and employers agreed to comply. Workers returned to work without penalty with benefits and minimum wage, but most importantly, their union was recognized in a traditionally anti-union town. Employees speaking up for better working conditions might sound familiar to some of us since the pressures of COVID-19 have put aspects of our lives into perspective. With the shortage of N95 masks earlier this year, politicians have called onto LA's garment industry to remain open and produce face masks for nurses and Angelinos. Because of that, garment workers are essential. But because many still come from marginalized communities, being undocumented, they are rarely seen or given just and healthy working conditions, risking their health and their lives in order to secure income. The efforts of Latina garment workers and union activists continue today with organizations such as the Garment Workers Center. It's clear that after 90 years since the Lady Garment Workers strike, marginalized communities continue to lead radical movements to fight for social and economic justice. Mm -hmm.